Hello, 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 and welcome. How are you doing, C. Allen? I am excited to have you today. How's your day been going? My day has been going great. I had a great lunch today. Um, I'm still full from that lunch, so I'm... <laughs> I am excited to hear that. You know, lunch is very important. I've been talking to um, a lot of business owners about self-care, and I know that that sounds odd, but a lot of times business owners, we forget to eat, like we'll forget to stop and have lunch or, you know, eating will happen if we're networking. But the thing is, when you're working on projects, you've got to stay hydrated and you have to stay um, nourished um, because that gives you the energy that you need to go about your day. So I am glad to hear you start off this conversation like that. So I'm so excited to have you today. Um, we're just going to jump right in and do this amazing interview. So I'm going to start with the most obvious question. This is the question for me um, that I've always wanted to ask you. What got you started or how did you get started in photography? How did I get started in photography? I literally remember picking up my first camera during a marketing internship for a company called Music World Entertainment. And there was a camera in our office and I just picked it up one day and I kind of taught myself how to use it. And people would say, you would make a great photographer. Nope, I did not like the title. I didn't like the word. I felt like it was boxing me in when I wanted to be all of these great things like a social media guru, um, all of that. But I used to take pictures of all of the events at our, at our company. Music World was a record label and a management company. Um, people know Solange, Destiny's Child. They, you see all of these plaques on the wall and you see all of these pictures, but it did not occur to me that the value of a photographer is why those plaques are on the wall in addition with the artist. But all I knew was that the camera for me it granted me access to a lot of um, private events. Um, a lot of times at that time, taking pictures for documenting purposes was very important. And so I kind of just became synonymous with having a camera. So whereas Chris, because we need pictures, kind of became the thing. And so that was when I first started taking pictures. Um, along the lines, I actually started taking it more serious. But I did like the access. Okay, okay. So that leads me to asking you this. What's your why in photography? Why do you continue to do it? That's a really, really good question. And I'm not just, I'm not just saying that. It's a really good question because a lot of times we have to keep redefining our why. If you've been doing something for years, and you may get kind of, it may get kind of stale or not as, not as exciting to you. Um, so my why changes. My initial why was because I felt like I contributed, contributed to the experience of people's events. And I saved those experiences. Um, if you want to connect the emotional aspect of photography, I can go through my pictures from years ago to see people that are no longer with us. So that makes the value of those pictures go up. And a lot of times it's not even for me, it's for the people that I've taken pictures of. But my why literally has changed within the last three or four years. I wanted to challenge people to have the excitement that I had when I was taking pictures, literally of whether it was Destiny's Child, whether it was the Essence Festival, whether it was a fashion show. And I'm like, okay, we all have cameras now. I wonder, can I give somebody else this, this experience? So that's how my why became, listen, that's where this whole shoot your shot thing came from was kind of teaching other people how to have fun and learn something kind of cool. All right, that naturally brings me to the next question. <laughs> So the next question is going to be heartfelt, right? What okay. is your passion pitch of your program? So if you had to tell people what it is that you do in the most passionate way that you possibly could, that would get us to feel what you feel about what you do, tell us your passion, passion pitch for your program and what you do. 
my passion, <laughs> that's a tongue twister. Passion my bitch. Passion yeah. for my program is, <clears throat> I know for me, there was a long time period where I didn't go anywhere. I suffered with depression because of, of a medical situation that changed the trajectory of my college career. But a camera for me, it brought me outside of the room. It brought me, it gave me something to do and fill that time. And so now photography, when I use it as one skill set to teach kids, students, and even adults, what I see is that it builds confidence in kids. It boosts self-esteem. I've seen kids that really, when you're a child, you don't really know what you want to do. It's, it's kind of early. You really don't know what you want to do. And you, you're just trying to find yourself. But especially introverts, when you put cameras in those kids' hands, you don't tell them what to shoot. You just, you just guide them into shooting something. And you let them play with that camera. And you just let them discover what they want to shoot. I've seen kids get excited. I've seen kids who don't normally smile because they're they're just serious. I've seen them come out of their shell and the parents is what, when the parents tell me, I don't know what you did to my son, but he was directing us. He was telling us how to pose, where to stand. And I'm like, I love that because for me, we had to come out of our quiet, quiet space. Sometimes I can be an introvert, but you have to step it up. So when I see kids doing the same thing, knowing before they were the quiet kid, I know I know I have a um, a good program. I know I can teach kids how to um, take control of the room. And that's why, to me, I'm like, your camera is your access pass. We have to take advantage of it right now in 2022 because it, because it is something of value that you are, people know if you got a camera in your hand, he must gonna capture something great. So when kids have that same mentality, you can apply it to different areas of your life like you have an access to anywhere you want to go, any room you want to be in. I don't know if that answers the question, but I can tell you I'm passionate about that. Well, we can tell that you are passionate about that. I felt all that love and all of that energy, and that is so great. Um, so what I'd like to, to ask next would be, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Um, I love how you shared with us what your program is and how it helps students. What I'd love for you um, to share with me now is, who would you say or what child or type of student or parent, because I'd like you to use this for adults um, and students. Um, and, and the reason why it's important is because I know that you have the ability to do both because I've participated in one of your um, events that you have done that are for business owners, which is amazing. So when, when, when you think of the results that you have had with your program, can you talk to me more about the audience that you believe or the target demographic that you believe benefits the absolute most from your service? I think the audience that benefits the absolute most from my program are the kids that are not, they, they are not, um, they may not be into sports. They may not be into football, basketball, or um, any other athletics. Um, there are also kids that are not into being on camera. Those are the kids that are not into the whole, um, the social media, look at me, I'm an influencer. There's, there, there are other kids and adults that are still in that, in that, um, in that ecosystem, in that digital ecosystem, that there's a place for them. And so I, I like to find those kids because it activates them with an action. They don't have to, it, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of um, anxiety that comes with feeling like you have to be an influencer or have to be on camera. But now I'm creating that behind the scenes person. I am me. If I can create other me's out there where now you have something that you don't have to do as a career with adults. Technology sometimes is scary, but I break that ice and I say, hey, it does not have to be scary. You don't have to know what every gadget, every button does. Let's find something as simple that you can do. 
and start there and right there. So my audience, my audience are those that are not necessarily um, the influencers or the athletes in the family. They are the introverts, the ones that probably spend a lot of time by themselves. Bring them to me. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. So the reason I wanted to ask that question is so often when we talk about um, media, digital, photos, video, all of that, people automatically assume that they have to be an in front of the camera kind of person. And there is an opportunity for people um, who are that maybe that's not their personality. Um, the thing that I love about what you do is that you give people the opportunity to create their own narrative whether they are in front of the camera um, personality or behind the camera personality. There is a space for everyone. Um, and I love that about what you do with your program. I just really wanted to highlight um, those that get the, the deepest um, assistance from being a part of, of, of your programming. So here comes, you ready? We got, some, we got some amazing questions coming up next, all right? Next question is, how do you want the world to be different because you lived in it? Oh, that's a powerful question. Matter of fact, it's so powerful. You have to say it again. How do you want the world to be different because you've lived in it? Got you. My answer to that is this. I want people to be more inclusive not exclusive. We live in a world where if you're not VIP, you nobody, bump that. I come from an industry where a lot of my peers have been super friendly. Um, if we share a passion, it's all, most of the time, <laughs> it's all of. I know it's not like that in a lot of other industries I'm here. But for me, Creating a message of um, is in, in, inclusiveness is a word. Um, finding you don't you don't have to like what I like, but find something that you do like and find other people who like those similar things and build a community, create a community, cultivate a community. And I want to do lead by example in doing that. Um, I want to create more storytellers. This is how I want to show up. This is how I, I would like other people to show up. Don't show up like you have it all together. I don't show up as that photographer. Yes, I have experience, but I still learn new things every day. We will learn together. So when you come to these events, we're gonna learn something together. And I don't wanna show up where I'm not authentic. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing. So it's okay to be, hey, I'm flawed, but I'm here. I'm gonna take a deep breath, everybody. Now, I look, I will inhale in a minute. I love it when I hear a great answer and when it speaks to my soul. So I thank you for that. That was amazing. I love how you showed up for yourself in that answer. Um, okay, so that brings me to the next one. So this one's a little bit deeper and okay. it does require a little bit of, I'm going to ask you to create a visualization or give us a visualization. So if I were to close my eyes, and visualize your version of progression for yourself personally and professionally. So if you were to give me a visualization of what progression looks like for you personally and professionally, how would you, how would you help me visualize your, your version of that? I feel like you will be able to see that visually through my team that is being built as we speak like there a lot of times it's just us but you will see that reflected through my team um you will see a structure where there was not necessarily one before <clears throat> um and i honestly I'll, I'll say execution so when you see that smooth operating machine and it looks like Christopher Allen has it all together. That will be an illustration of my progression. Whereas, let's be honest, when you're an entrepreneur by yourself, 
Some days you don't know what to do. Your head's spinning because there's so many tasks that need to be done. But once you see a team, what you're building, and that structure, and then that execution. I don't want to have a lot of cool people around me, but we're not executing. Real? Okay. <laughs> I can dig that. No, I really can. Um, I understand, you know, you we've we've discussed that we are aligned. Um, and I think that that's also a major way of how I would define progression for myself personally, as well as professionally. So we are coming to the last question. And the final question is going to it's my favorite question. I will share that with you. I would love for you to share with us your thoughts on. You ready? I think I am. Legacy and succession. What are your thoughts on that? What, what you know, tell me your, take us out with something really heart, heartfelt um, on how you feel about legacy and succession. I do understand um, legacy. So when you, when you say in su succession, can you give me a little bit more um, elaboration on that? Yes. What, when you think about as you grow your company, who will succeed you? Who will be the person that will take over if you make a decision to retire? What, what, what is the next step once you have conquered the mountains? What is your succession plan? I see what you're saying. Okay. Well, so my well, when, when in terms of legacy, I look at my that first generation of new photographers that I hope to train and know me like the back of my hand. Um, I like to be confident that they will be ready to take that flag and expand that brand, not necessarily me, but that brand of um, photography inclusivity, um, um, being creative, being those storytellers. Um, I, I have, I'm really, really close to my nieces and nephews. I really want them to take everything. I, they see the struggle, but they see the consistency within the industry that I've chose to make a career out of. So they haven't, they haven't seen the fancy stuff yet. They haven't seen the lifestyle that was like, Chris, when are you going to get a new car? I want, I want my legacy to be that my neck, like I said, the next generation of photographers and storytellers, and they'll know it's not so much technical because again, anybody can learn how to take a picture, but more so the experience, the storytelling and actually seeing people. Like I'm, I'm looking at you right now or I, or I get to know you about your business but I get to know you as a person. If they have those same traits and qualities, to me, that, that's the legacy that I wanna leave. It's not how great you can take a picture. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. I, I, I love that. I can dig that. So my last thing is going to be, I always wrap up by asking people to tell us where we can find you in these social media streets um, and then share with us anything that you have going on that you would love for us to know about that's coming up in the future. Okay, for sure. For sure. Well, I am, um, you can find me in these social media streets. Um, I like my preferred social media site is one is Instagram. Instagram at um, shoot your shot TX. Um, Instagram C dot Allen A L L E N photos. Again, that's Instagram. I will take over TikTok. Come and see. <laughs> um, yeah, and things that I have coming on, coming up, things that I'm, I am working on. <clears throat> um, under, under the umbrella of the C. Allen experience is just creating um, engaging and interactive photography related events. There's one event that I'm working on, it's called Behind the Filter. It's gonna challenge people to tell us who, who a little bit about you outside of your occupation. So it's not a TED talk, where you drop in a business gym, but it's personal. I've lived life with a medical condition since college that causes me to wear hats, 
to this day, people don't know why I'm always wearing beanies. But when you come to an event like behind a filter, you will you will hear these you will hear these stories from people that you see every day. And I want to kind of create it like a um, chicken noodle soup for the soul, where I'll invite a creative or a business owner to share that journey that you don't really hear about. Because I I continuously meet, I, I continue to meet people who would say, yeah, I have alopecia. I've been having it since I wouldn't have never known because you always show up with a smile on your face. You always show up like you're per we're perfect, but we got we to gotta share these stories. So I have that. I'm working on a date and I need a venue for it. Um, and yeah, um, and, and Shoot Your Shot, the kids program is still in development. Okay. Well, you, it has been an absolute um, pleasure talking with you today. Um, I am going to wrap us up and tell everyone that if they are interested in coming to a place where they can find out what is going on in our community. And when I say going on in our community, I always meet the dopest humans. I love connecting with people. Um, I am, and am so excited that I've had the opportunity to know you and to work with you. And I think Thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I am going to tell everybody, like I tell them all the time, but till the next time I see them, be as intentional as they can about living the life that they dream of having. And bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.